Hi, welcome to Get A Brew. Today I'm wanting to look at beginner starter kits for wine. So um, wine making's evolved a lot over the years. Um, my parents would have made wine in the 80s and in comparison to the quality of the wine kits that was available then to the quality of the wine kits that are available now, it is an unbelievable difference. So the thing to remember is that it's possible to make better than shop bought wine for a fraction of the price. Um, this wine kit that I'm featuring today is an Australian blend Primo Grigio wine kit. It's a seven day wine kit and it creates 30 bottles. There is so many different varieties of wine out there nowadays. So you can have a seven day wine kit, 14 day wine kit, a 30 day wine kit. And basically they can go up in price to whatever you want to spend. At the end of the day, we, we cater for all scales right down to the budget range right up to ultra premium what we try to do is um, stock lots of different wine varieties to suit everyone's budget and everyone's taste so if you like malbecs we have malbecs if you like sauvignon blanc pinot grigio if you like rosé there's something there for everyone why have i featured the australian blend pinot grigio in our beginner starter kit it makes incredibly good white wine for really it, it's, it's easy to make it and it's also exceptionally cheap to make. So that kit is um, just over 30 pounds. It makes in the region of 30 bottles of wine. And we've put together the basic starter equipment that you need. You'll hear me saying this about all of the Getter Brewed starter equipment. Um, we've put a focus on the quality of the equipment. And we've also tried to put a focus on the fact that you've got everything that you need that you're not having to go and source other things whenever you sit down to start making that batch. And we want to have instructions that make things very clear. We want to be beginner friendly. We want to reach out to people and say, we want you to brew successfully time and time again, because if you do, you're gonna come back to us. We want to build a relationship with our customers. Um, we're an honest, independent family business. It's in our interest for you to brew successfully. It's in our interest to promote home brewing. So home winemaking, Let's look at the beginner starter kit. What do you get in it? So you get two 33 litre fermenters. It's a siphonless setup. Why do we go for siphonless? It just means that you're not taking lids off to put a siphon in to start pumping that siphon, taking the risk of getting oxygen into the wine that you've taken the time and care to create. So I'll take the lid off. Um, this one, and take out the, the component parts that we have in the basic starter kit. So. I'll start with the tap because I've been talking about siphoning. So here we have a tap. Um, it's a premium quality plastic molded European tap. It has the on and off on the, the tap that opens and shuts. Um, it has two rubber, rubber seals. We have upgraded that from one to two because we want to have a rubber seal on either side of the fermenter wall here. So if we take um, this nut off and this washer off and we get the you've got your getter brewed fermenter here so get your tap it's a real nice fit what we what we have done is deliberately made that quite tight to prevent leaks and once you get it started you should just easily be able to screw that into place and you will notice that it's been screwed in enough whenever the rubber seal starts to push against you can see there that that's a nice tight seal so just pop the tap to one side that allows it to sit down. The second rubber seal gets popped onto the thread and then we just pop this little nut on and we're tightening that until it becomes tight against the internal fermenter wall. So we want to transfer from one bucket to another now. We have created a, a way of doing that where it's sealed with air. So, um, that's on nice and tight. It's got a rubber seal on either side. So the next component part to look at is the bubbler airlock. So you're going to have one for each fermenter. And um, we've got a rubber grommet on here. Again, nice, good, tight fit, good quality. Um, bubbler airlock slides in there. Um, the, very briefly, so the bubbler airlock, when you've put your contents in there and you want to seal things up by pushing this down nice and tight, you half fill this with water. So during the fermentation, what's happening is the grape concentrate and the water that's been mixed 
has yeast added to it. The yeast's eating the fermentable sugars in that liquid and it's creating carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide bubbles out through the airlock so it comes up through here and goes through the little bit of water you've put in. That's great because it lets the CO2 out. The benefit to this system is that it doesn't let oxygen in because the water's there. It won't bubble because it doesn't have the pressure to come in. And the reason that we put the, the taps on here is one, if you need to transfer from one bucket to another, you can do that without having to take the lid off. And you don't have to put a siphon in. And secondly, is whenever it comes to the bottling stage. So if we use this bucket, so say, um, you come to the bottling stage, get your tap around to, to here, pop on your bottle filling stick. The bottle filling stick is spring mounted, so if you pop your bottle on over the bottle filling stick, once the bottom of that hits the bottom of the bottle, it will start to fill. And when you've got your desired fill level, just pull the bottle away and flow stops. And it's just as simple as switching this on and off to start to get the liquid to fill into the bottle filling stick. So that's one of the reasons why we, we use siphonless starter kits as opposed to um, using, using siphons. So we'll just pop that, that away there for one second. So other things that come in the starter kit is a mixing paddle. Um, purpose of the mixing paddle, whenever you put your concentrate in your water in here before you add the yeast, to get the paddle in to get a really good mix. And what you're doing at that stage is oxygenating and aerating the wort, which pre-fermentation is acceptable. You don't want oxygen in post-fermentation, so using that to give things a really good clean. Um, talking of cleaning, um, all of our beginner starter kits come with a sterilizer. It may vary on the type of sterilizer you get. The important thing is to read the instructions on the sterilizer as to how to use it. So put a couple of teaspoons or a teaspoon, depending on what the dosage rate is for the particular one, into your fermentation bucket. Add all of the component parts in there. Ensure that it's got its minimum contact time. Sometimes that could be three minutes. Sometimes it could be slightly longer, depending on the sterilizer. You'll hear me using the acronym SIT, and that stands for Sterilization, Information and Temperature. These are critically important. If you follow these things, you'll brew successfully. So sterilization is literally, brewing is 90% cleaning. If everything that touches what you're creating is sterile, you'll have a much lesser risk of anything going wrong. We provide um, little stick-on LCD thermometers that go onto the outside of your fermenters as well. You just peel the back and on, put it on where you want. Some people like to have them sideways, some people this way. It covers, um, where you want to go from 10 to 40 degrees. Most wines ferment in early 20, so 20, 22 degrees. Very briefly, without going into too much detail, fermentation temperature is critically important that it remains constant. Uh, yeast doesn't like fluctuations. Um, historically, you'll hear, heard of people putting and brewing wine in their hot press. I would strongly advise against that. You want it in an area that the, the temperature is constant. If you're not able to maintain a constant temperature, then we can provide little heat belts that go on around the buckets to, to maintain that temperature as an added extra. Um, <clears throat> finally, the last little component part we have here is a hydrometer. It's a Stevenson Rees hydrometer. What um, this does is it measures the sugar content in the, in the grape juice and the water. If you take a reading at the start of fermentation before you add your yeast, that lets you know your starting gravity. And then if you take a reading during it, it lets you know how much the, the yeast has eaten of the sugar. The starting temperature, or the starting gravity and the final gravity allows you to work out the alcohol content and there's lots of free online calculators that will work that out for you. You've two fermenters set up identically. Ingredient kit and you've also got then a corker and some corks. So corker works really simply. You take the cork, you load it in here, and then place this over the head of your wine bottle. And those two levers go just pull down the side and it corks in. It is actually really easy to do, and you can reuse screw top bottles. Um, you can cork a screw top bottle, just be careful whenever you're doing it. We want you to have everything to create the wine from start to finish. So with this beginner kit, all you really need is empty bottles and a willingness to, to spend half an hour preparing the kit when it arrives. So if everything's sterile and 
you follow the instructions that come within the wine kit, what will happen is you'll, you'll make this in a very short period of time. So I'm just gonna do bullet points now on how to create the wine. And this will be relevant to most wine kits. So this seven day wine kit, you open the wine up inside, it'll have instructions and additives. And it'll have a jerry can of grape concentrate. So there's your little instruction leaflet. Remember when I said SIT, sterilization information temperature. So there's your instruction leaflet. This is your grape concentrate. So what you're doing is you're taking everything sterile. We've got that part right. We've got all our component parts set up and ready. We've checked that our taps on securely, that there's no leaks. So we empty, empty our grape concentrate in. And what I would suggest then is that we empty a kettle of boiling water. That allows you to give it a nice mix, get things loosened up. It also adds a little bit of heat. Then we, we um, bring the water volume up. There's a graduated marker along the side here. Bring it up to 20 litres and check the temperature on the stick on thermometer. What you're aiming for is early 20s. So once you've got it to 20, you can check the temperature. You can then decide if you need to add more hot water or more cold water and take it up to the 23 litre mark. Once it's filled, give it a really good mix at the 23 litre mark using your um, mixing paddle. And then take a gravity reading, record the gravity reading. The hydrometer explains how to take a gravity reading in the instructions. There's a little instruction leaflet inside that. You then um, cut open the top of your yeast and sprinkle that on top. Please be aware that you don't want to use, go into all the hassle of cleaning everything you don't want to use a dirty pair of scissors to cut open the yeast. Um, so have sterile scissors and paying attention to that. Sprinkle it on top and then make a really good seal. So this gets pushed down nice and hard to get everything sealed. This gets half filled with water. And what you'll find is you put that somewhere with a constant temperature in the early 20s. What it'll do is it'll bubble away here. Um, and you can check the gravity reading occasionally to know when fermentation has begun, where it's at. and when it's finished. Usually a good sign to know is whenever the bubbles stop, it means that fermentation stop, but always double check your gravity reading. Then at that stage, you're going to want to transfer from one um, vessel to another once fermentation is complete. Again, the benefit of having the tap is that the tap's above the wine lees, which is created during fermentation. So you're drawn off the tap. Um, so usually what we do is we do gravity. So this bucket with a chair say with the other bucket below it switch the the tap on and transfer from one vessel to another leaving behind the wine lees and then follow your instructions for when to add the different um, additives at that stage and once that's complete and cleared then you can proceed to the bottling so that was a very bullet point step-by-step -step process of how to make a wine kit and um, wine making has improved drastically we make a lot of wine here at home um, our staff are keen winemakers and we really do champion that you can make great quality wine at home. We've made wine for um, our friends and family for gifts. We've made wine for friends for their wedding venues and it really is surprising at the quality that you can make. Just put a, a focus on the, the sterilization, the information and the temperature. And if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to reach out to us. It's in our interest to help you make your wine successfully and we have a range of wine kits that suits all budgets. Thanks so much for coming in and watching us today and we look forward to seeing you again soon.